Joining us now is former Deputy Assistant Secretary for Policy in the Department of Homeland Security and former Senior Counsel to the Kenneth Starr investigation, Paul Rosenzweig. Paul, thanks so much. You are the perfect guest for us to have on set this weekend, so thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. So, first question here, we keep hearing this week that this drumbeat of Mueller's coming to a close. Mueller's bringing the investigation to the finish line based on, I think, the way he's treating witnesses, the sentencing memos that came out this week. Do you share that uh, view of the tea leaves right now? Well, that's a bit of a fair inference, but I think it's a little premature. I mean, pre uh, Mr. Mueller is still uh, seeking the testimony of Roger Stone, for example, and Jerome Corsi. And those may open up new avenues of inquiry into the allegations of connections between Russia and, and the Trump campaign. So I think it is fair to say he's nearer the end than the beginning, but I also that, think it's not fair to Not to put you it. on the spot, and we won't hold you to this, but if you had to bet, are we weeks out? Are we months out? Middle of Ballpark. next year. Middle, Middle of, of next year, so yeah, six more months. More or less, yeah. Six months, okay. Yeah, that's, that's a guess. Um, and what about, so it seems like the late, with the latest uh, rulings, the, the latest sentencing memos coming out this week, um, judges are going kind of all in in terms of how seriously they're treating the crime. You know, with Michael Cohen getting three years, he could have maybe gotten up to six, but he's, it's a significant amount of time. What, what do you take I, from I that? think that's right. I mean, uh, irrespective of whether or not uh, President Trump is ever implicated in any criminality, uh, the Mueller investigation has uh, scored a, a large number of successes involving uh, Manafort, for example, and then the Southern District of New York's investigation of Michael Cohn has produced a fairly significant sentence uh, and jail time for Mr. Cohn. So, so there's a real seriousness of the criminality that undergirds some of this, ir again, irrespective of whether or not it touches President Trump. Do you think that President Trump's defense team is doing a good job? How would you grade them? I think they're doing the only thing that they can do, which is try and distance the president from all of the people in his in his orbit who have gotten into trouble. It, it's hard to do that. It's hard to distance yourself from your former national security advisor and your your former campaign manager. But they and they really don't decades long attorney and former decades long attorney. But you really don't want to be in the same bucket as them. And the best way to do that is to try and minimize their uh, influence, their impact, and their importance. So it's maybe, is it an effective strategy? It sounds like you're saying maybe not, but it's kind of the best option for them. Uh, you know, it, it's to be seen whether or not it, it's an effective strategy in court. It's certainly an effective strategy with the president's supporters in the public, right? Uh, but in the end, I think it doesn't go nearly as far as the president's uh, defense lawyers would like it to with judges, with uh, the prosecutor's office. It's just not credible to say, I didn't know what Manafort was doing. Have you seen other investigations of sitting presidents that have looked like this, meaning when you were working on the Clinton investigation, were, the, were there these sort of spin-off investigations President Trump's facing, um, or his, his associates are facing uh, criminal investigations in New York? Well, there's, there's, a, there's a difference. In the independent counsel era when I was there, all of the investigations of a president got lumped into a single bucket. So Ken Starr's investigation went from Whitewater to Monica Lewinsky. Here, uh, the Mueller investigation has been relatively narrowly circumscribed, and when they find something new, like Michael Cohn and the, fin and the campaign financings, they spin it off. Let me just stop you there for a second. So you're saying the investigation has been fairly contained. The president's supporters have been saying all along it's been spinning out of control. Why are they looking at the president's finances? That's out of bounds. So you don't really buy all of that? Well, the president's finances are being investigated not by Mr. Mueller, but by the Southern District of New York, at least as far as we can tell from the outside. The Mueller investigation has been circumscribed to Russia's social media interference, Russia's theft of uh, of emails from the Democratic National Committee and any real connections with them. The only thing that's really outside of that bound was Paul Manafort. Uh, and you can kind of so. understand. Well, uh, Manafort's uh, assistance uh, to the and, and money laundering involving the Ukrainians was really not that closely connected to the Russia investigation. I think he was a target who came across their screen early on, and it's pretty hard for a prosecutor to ignore $73 million worth of, of alleged fraud. So they might have spun that off, but because Manafort was so tightly tied to the Trump campaign, I think they thought that by bringing him in, they might get some value for the rest of their investigation. Paul Rosenzweig, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. We appreciate it. Thanks for having we'll me. We'll check back in with you again soon.